Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School opening. We have a, another special treat for you today. We are going to learn the doxology. More on that from Jacob. All right, so the doxology is the title of our song today. And what doxology means is praise God. So when we praise God, we praise God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we're going to learn the song today. I'm just going to go over uh, each uh, phrase by phrase. So the first line goes like this. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And the next line. Praise him all creatures here below. And then praise him above ye heavenly hosts. And then we end with, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay? So, David and I are going to sing this through once, and then we'll go through it again afterwards. Okay? Sounds good. Praise God from whom all blessings. on the counter and you just go today's gonna be a good day right you guys like mac and cheese maybe it's mac and cheese maybe some beef stroganoff nice midwestern classic or uh, maybe if you have a sweet tooth it's some homemade brownies yeah or uh, maybe some rice I know rice goes in a lot of dishes in fact that's kind of what I want to talk about so when I came home from school, and I opened the front door, and I smelt what was cooking inside, there was one smell, and mom, dad, Rachel, you all know what I'm talking about. Whenever I would open the door and smell this smell, oh, it was the greatest thing ever. My dad's red beans and rice. This is hands down my favorite meal growing up and even today probably my favorite home-cooked meal a good old pot of red beans cooking on the stove for four six eight hours getting nice and tender oh my goodness my mouth's watering right now so now whatever that is for you i want you to think about it right now, what if you went up to your mom and dad and you were ready to eat? You were so excited because it's your favorite thing, and they said, you can't have any today. Now, that would be a shock. 
that would be pretty upsetting, right? You know, it's your favorite meal, it's your house, and here it is, and it's ready, but they said you can't eat it. Now I know if my dad did that to me, if I walked in and smelt those red beans, been cooking all day, and he said that it's for everybody else but not me, I know my soul would leave my body in that moment and I would be seeing Jesus already. I would lose it. That would be it. I couldn't handle it because of the smells, the hunger. It was just, it would kill me. It would crush me. It would be terrible. Now, maybe you guys don't feel that strongly about your favorite foods, but it wouldn't be good, right? Now, we know that our parents would never do that to us, right? We know that they make food for us, they prepare it for us, they keep us safe. If ever we get hurt, they take care of us. Our parents are there to be there for us. Our parents are there for us. Right? It's kind of the same thing with Jesus, right? Jesus is always there for us. Now, in our gospel today, we hear about a lady, and she asked Jesus to do something very special for her. See, her daughter is really sick, and she asked Jesus to heal her. Just like our parents, if ever we were in trouble or hurt, they would want us to get better, right? They would want to help us any way they can. This lady is asking Jesus to heal her daughter. A little bit about this lady. She's not one of Jesus' followers, not one of his disciples. They don't know who she is. She's a stranger. She's not even from their country. They have no idea who she is. She's from a country that typically doesn't believe in the one true God. They believe in many false gods. But after asking and asking, Jesus says yes. This woman who didn't grow up knowing who God was or knowing about Jesus showed faith in Jesus. She called him her Lord the Savior God that was promised centuries ago. She knew that Jesus was God's Son and could help her. Jesus said, O woman, great is your faith. And he answered her instantly and healed her little girl. This was probably pretty confusing for the disciples, right? Because the disciples kind of thought that Jesus was the Savior promised to the people of Israel, right? They thought that Jesus was sent to save them and only them. What Jesus is doing here is demonstrating that he is here to save all people, not just the Jews, the Israelites, the people of God, but Jesus came for everybody, which is why we keep saying in these messages that we need to tell everybody and as many people as we can because Jesus didn't just come for us who already believe he came for everybody in the world Jesus didn't just come for Jews but also for the Gentiles the believers and the non-believers so we need to help in any way we can right we need to help spread that gospel spread that message so that the unbelievers can become believers like us. Sometimes we have trouble asking God for what we want, don't we? Sometimes we think, you know what, this problem is too small. It really doesn't need God's attention. It, it doesn't matter if it gets helped or not, but it still worries me. But you know what, God has bigger things to deal with. Or maybe sometimes we're scared that Maybe our thing is too big, and we think, you know what, this is just too big. Or maybe some people think, you know what, I'm too old to start believing in Jesus now. I've gone my whole life not knowing Jesus. How can I then just turn it around now and become a believer? Sometimes we can be impatient with God, right? Where we pray.
pray to him and pray to him and pray to him, and it seems like our prayers aren't being answered. Right? It feels like God keeps saying no to us. And maybe he is. But God answers every single prayer. No prayer goes unanswered. It's either a yes, a no, or wait. And we struggle with that, don't we? We struggle with the waiting. We want our prayers answered now. We don't want to slave over a pot of red beans for four to six hours when we can go through the Popeye's drive through in close to that time and get ourselves some red beans and rice from there, right? We want it fast. We want it now. We want God to answer our prayers now. But sometimes it's not the right time, right? God's timing is perfect. Our timing isn't. We need to remember that God is our loving Father who always takes care of us. He is always there for us to do what is best for us. Sometimes we don't know what's best for us. Sometimes we think we know what's best for us. But God truly does. Jesus came to save all people. And we show faith in him when we pray to him, right? Prayer is that wonderful thing that we have to ask God for what we need, for what we want. We can talk to God whenever we want, and we know that he will answer our prayer in his time, in the best time, and in the best way. God knows all things. Just like we know our parents are going to do what's best for us, they're going to feed us, they're going to give us our favorite meals, they're going to take care of us when we're hurt. In the same way, we know that God is going to always take care of us. He wants the best for us. And so we go to him and ask him for what we want. Can you guys pray with me now? Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to save us and for welcoming all people into your home and family. Help us to keep praying for whatever we need. To trust you to take care of us and to tell others that they can trust in you too. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us again this morning in hearing God's word and what he would have us do. Please continue to stick around if you are at home to watch the worship service that we have premiering at 12 o'clock. It is our 8 o'clock worship service that is recorded, so you're going to be able to worship alongside everyone that is here, and you're going to be able to hear all of their bright, shining voices. So please stick around and view that too. Thank you all so much for joining us again. I love you all, and I'll see you when I see you.